Mr. Rogers vibes to it. It does, yeah. Even though it's not the original. No. Well, hello, friends. I think we're it's... watching the Mandela effect in real life. I think that's in real time. I think, that's I think we are. Our, yeah. our reality is warping before yep. our very eyes. Right before our eyes. You know, and it does so because it's Mutants and Masterminds Monday. And on this day, we are talking about retcons and robots. Our next our next Kickstarter uh, happening. No, I'm kidding. Retcons and reboots. reboots. And uh, yeah, it's reboots. Swords of the Shadow Robots. Yes. <laughs> oh, oh, now, yeah, I kind of like actually, the sound that of sounds, that. That sounds kind of awesome. Actually. It does sound kind of awesome. <laughs> um, Somebody tell Malcolm. Right, coming to a grim dark universe near you. You'll be you like, know, one, he watches. one minute, I just have to revise the entire book. <laughs> yeah, oh my god. Alex, I love your idea. I'm going to rewrite all of it right now. <laughs> We're letting a little uh, behind the scenes secrets slip out. Um, but hey, look at this crew of people. Gene's here. Oranon, good to right? see you. Oh, we hey, love Oranon. Welcome back. We do Oranon. indeed. Stanex is here as well. Stan. Uh, love Stan. <laughs> Mastermind of you, to be fair. said heyo. I thought that he said mayo. I was like, I don't think so. Uh, Tempo's here. RC, good to see you. I guess they're doing Crisis on Infinite Mumamo. <laughs> we were here all along. Squire, good to see you. Who Can else the we mayo got? man be the Mothman equivalent for Gravy Squatch? Oh Ooh, my god. I never, think so. Never mention that again. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I, I love. Just threw up a little in my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> that is the effect. That is the effect Gravy Squatch has on me. <laughs> wow. Well, you know, I, it's hard visceral. for me to have visceral, uh, juiced, uh, savory. Um, my reaction when I get to hang out with you, uh, both of you two, is to do something sort of like, um, what do I do? I think I do this. Where are you? Do, 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 do. There you are. Hi, guys. Hi. Hi. Good friends, we gather on this Mumamo to talk about retcons and reboots. And um, I, I'm fascinated by the subject, and people are yeah. already pinging me with stuff. But we have to do a little <laughs> housekeeping before we dive in. Of and yeah, and you know, as we do, as we are often want to do, um, let me get my shares fired up. Uh, first, I want to let's let's start with uh, the the good news. This is good news and some weird news. I'll say it's not really bad. It's just weird. Mm. Uh, but we're inviting people to sign up to join the Valiant Adventures Game System Preview. Mm -hmm. It's going to be an event, a series of events uh, where you could be a GM, where you could play in a, uh, uh, with a GM that you may not know or someone that you may know. Uh, maybe one of these two gentlemen here. Um, the idea is there's a lot of great stuff to talk about as it relates to Valiant because, you know, we did that Kickstarter. It's going strong and we're looking forward to. So if you're listening for the first time, and you're like Valiant Comics, my favorite. I love it. Well, you will love it. You will love it. And it's going to be. Um, uh, it's funded. Mm -hmm. We're at 39161. It's, it's happening right now. There's a link that I'm dropping in chat. Run on over there to that. Uh, back it as quick as you can. Check out the um, the stretch goals. Uh, they are magnifique. We're mm -hmm. all, you know, you know when the entire uh, publishing house is excited about the add-ons that something, something right's going on. Um, so there's that. Um but uh, as far as the joining up and hanging out with us and uh, being a part of the, the Valiant Adventures game system preview, all you've got to do is fill out this wee little form. It's a Google Doc um, uh, form. You can click on it and it will um, populate with your details and then we will kick something off here. Gosh, with really soon, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, sure. yeah mere, mere moments. Um, so that'll be a lot of fun. If you've got any questions, of course, send a note to let's play at greenronin.com and I'll get the link to you via via email. I'm noticing that it says can't post some comments to some destinations, with which often suggests that Facebook is pulling some shenanigan. And if mm. that is the case, um, uh, have no fear. We'll post something over there as well for you to be able to join in all the fun. Um, I want to say hello to um, Instagram. You're on here. Um, uh, we're streaming to you. In addition, 
someone was giving me the business. They're like, why are you streaming to LinkedIn? Uh, and partially mm -hmm. the reason is because I, um, I I want people to know about what's going on with this great right. product. And, and, and also because it's the, it, the place mm -hmm. is dry as dirt. And we have because a whole one funny. fan on LinkedIn too. <laughs> we do. Like, we always get the one. So if it's you're the always one, Dominic, right? <laughs> you're right. It was Dominic. And then one individual that I can't recall his name, but I do uh, care about him deeply. And so if he's there, um, you know, say hello. Um, but you might be running into trouble over at Facebook. And if that is the case, I apologize on behalf of um, everybody, including Zuckerberg. So um, check out that link in the chat. Uh, we'll post something to Facebook as well. It's very simple. Fill that out. Let us know what your, uh, what your GM knowledge is with some easy, quick questions, and then we'll take care of the rest. Um, okay. So, all right. You know that I'm working on on sort of getting into that that whole confrontational vibe on Facebook. Like I, I want to, I really want to be able to, um, you know, to draw the eye and and sort mm -hmm. of trick people into coming and enjoying this program, um, and uh, which is kind of what it, we're doing. And so I took some pictures of the both of you, some expressions, if you will, mm -hmm. and um, well. Um, Okay, well, let me just, how about I show you? Um, it is, uh, it, it's, it's weird. Um, the, the challenge is that in this, in this work. Uh, Jay Gray's on LinkedIn today. Hey, mm -hmm. Jay Gray. <laughs> oh, you are that one, Jay. You are the one, <laughs> Jay Gray. Also, you know, uh, the original Link Wizard. Um, right. Always good to see you, Jay. Uh, also, Wired so, Kamikaze, I'm glad you think the player mats look cool because I wanted them yes. very badly. Oh, look, hey, yes. Ken's here too. Good to see you. Claude says, I have signed up. Um, awesome. I like Fret cons and freebooters. Fret cons is most of our company. Well, that right. is true. It's um, true. There's a lot of fretting. A lot so, of fretting. Not many cons, but a lot of fretting. So mm. the challenge that we're facing right now is um, is a, it's a it's a it's a weird one. Um, see when I took your picture, Alex, um, it cut off the top of your head because you are in that little box and, and it ended up, unfortunately, um, don't make fun of my Photoshopping, but I tried to make your hair come back, like, you know, to the top mm -hmm. and it, it just, well, here we go. Let's take a look. Um, it was a little weird. And so it's mm -hmm. just kind of odd. And so, so I, I thought I, Put, I put some plans together to sort of amend that. Um, I was and, trying to make your uh, your Bob Ross photoshopping job easier for the next uh, Joy of right. Mastering. I easier appreciate to fit, that. Fit in with that wig. I appreciate <laughs> that. Well, speaking of, um, I thought perhaps we could get away with something like that, and I, it doesn't quite get it done. But and so I thought, well, what if we put on a hat, like a hat mm -hmm. or something? We love a we love a hat. Um, oh, there we go. <laughs> It's a big hat, and it didn't That's quite a statement fit. Piece. It is yeah. indeed. It is indeed. You do have the a popey look about you, so it's a conversation starter. Ali, good to see you, Ali. Uh, <laughs> you know, I I don't know. I don't know. Mm. Uh, it's got a whole minute work vibe. Oh, there we go. There, you know, this is Sparta. So like that, <laughs> right? Yeah. Um, yeah, uh, that one, that one seemed, you know, our, our buddy Stan, he, he wears a fez at times mm -hmm. that one, it, it's giving me real bad dates. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Real John Reese Davies. Yeah. Real John yes. Reese Davies vibes yeah. there. Yeah. Uh, then we got that, which I thought, you know, kind of fun. You're kind of inviting people to a, a world of pure imagination, you know, but, uh, yeah, at least I, 60% I, imagination. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Yeah. But, yeah. but it also is giving me, um, petulant middle school girl so i'm, I'm i can't mm. quite yeah um oh, da, there we da, 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 da. Yeah. yeah i like that and then was that yep. it that RPG was it royalty i like Good that for it. so um there we go oh, tempo i will do that oh, the Gatsby. <laughs> yeah so there you go um i i i am um fond of a couple of these looks and they may show up for reasons unknown uh to us now but um i think we should do another <laughs> Shoot. I'm here for it. Another shooting. That looks good. Gene likes. I the think one you should send me crown. that crown in real life, uh, Troy. Yeah. I will. I will box it up in the mail. Good. <laughs> and send it right your way. Okay. So we're talking about. But did I get everything? By the way, is there anything I'm missing? 
We talked about the Kickstarter. We talked about filling out that form. We've talked about the Mandalorian mm -hmm. helmet. I tried to find the Mandalorian. I also wanted to find the, um, what are they? The Twi'lek uh, uh, blue. Um... Oh, the Lekus, the head, head tails? Yes, 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 yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Uh, uh, Simon says, speaking of reboots, I can imagine Clique from Metaphor being rebooted from celebutants into influencers. Oh, very much so. Oh, yeah. The Clique yeah. click would thrive in the social media environment. They Absolutely. Really before their time. In that yeah. regard. It's, it's really funny how, uh, how ahead of their time most game designers are when they're designing characters. Hey, uh, I do want to repeat the, something that Wired Kamikaze said, because I agree. Um, Wired Kamikaze says uh, the PA Valiant Adventures episode was excellent. Great job as a GM, mm -hmm. Alex. Yeah, it was phenomenal. It was right. really, really great. I had a great time. They, were, uh, they yes. were nice guys. It was a wonderful studio. I got to be in Seattle for a week and longer That's than right. I expected to because mm -hmm. that airplane sure. problems. Right. Yeah, the whole not having uh, a having doors you know, thing. Yeah, that was yeah. Crazy. Yeah, most yeah. people don't like having a butterfly door on there commercial mm -mm. airliner nope no no that seems yeah nope. counterproductive there's, to the there's landing a, there's part a great line of you know the i don't know flight attendants saying if you're sitting in an exit row and a passenger being like how do we know it's an exit row yet <laughs> that's <laughs> right yeah it'll become clear <laughs> real um, quick as it just sucks all the clothes off of you as you're strapped into your seats like yikes um but yeah. that was a really fun story though I'm, I'm very pleased with how that turned out because i was i was struggling to come up with an idea until i i got to seattle mm -hmm. uh that's the way it works isn't it um hey i do want to remind folks that um what did i want to want to remind folks hey you know what uh pook reminds me that you should devo hat david bolock you're absolutely right um that we um you know, do me a favor, wherever you're at, take a look at, are you maybe over on the YouTubes? Are you hanging out on Facebook Live? Maybe you're watching this on Twitter for reasons unknown, or perhaps you're hanging out on LinkedIn all by yourself and your name is Jay Gray. Whatever the case may be, just make sure that you are subscribed, that you like, and then share it. Let people know, yes. um, you know, that you are a fan. Uh, leave a comment. Say something about Alex's Fez, whatever you got in the chamber. I mean, even if it's a little uh, challenging or you've got a, a, a disagreement uh, or you need some advice, some love, whatever it may be, uh, you uh, leave it in the comments and then it'll come back to you threefold. Uh, no, but then we'll be feeding the algorithm and that will send us right mm -hmm. into the stratosphere. Uh, let's see. Is that Action Comics number one behind Alex? Yes. It <laughs> yes. is. It, yeah. <laughs> it is. Actually, I have a... Um... I got this for Christmas. One of my friends got me a little Funko hey. band with an OG Superman. Nice. And, uh, action Comics backdrop. Love it. Love it. Um, it's not let's... a real one because I don't have $10 million lying around. But Right. Uh, JC, you're doing double duty. Jay's over at face on Facebook and LinkedIn. Wow. Two great tastes. Um, good funny. eye, Villith. Um, very good eye. And uh, okay, so let's let's get rid of all this other nonsense. Everyone's liked, they're sharing, they're typing a mm -hmm. uh, soliloquy, uh, and we've got some business to tend to. And that is that we are talking about how to, you know, um, uh, how to do, how to retcon, uh, right. retcons and reboots for repair and resuscitation. Um, <clears throat> so yeah. I wrote, yes. Do we want to start off for folks defining what it is we mean by please, retcons and reboots? Please do. Yeah. I think actually let's... we should start over the episode right now. Right. That's Just in the spirit idea. of the topic. Yeah, let's do it. Yeah. We've been here all along. We weren't even late. Uh, <laughs> so, Alex, check me if I'm getting this right. But my understanding is that a retcon, uh, which is short for retroactive continuity, means that you are inserting some background detail uh, into the history of a character or a story or the like. Um, that may change, you know, how it's viewed in some way, um, but it's basically saying, hey, there's this additional detail in this background that explains this thing in this way, you know, um, like, and oftentimes in the comics, retcons were often done to explain seeming continuity errors. Um, and they were said, oh, well, because this thing, you know, that actually happened is why you know, this character's eye color was different in this story or whatever. Um, reboots are when you take a storyline, a character, or a, even an entire setting, 
and basically start over again um, and say, we are just going to start over from the beginning um, and basically start telling this character or this settings story over. Um, and um, reboots often get into changing certain details or often changing a lot of details. Yeah. Um, and will sometimes tell older stories in a new way um, or will just tell completely new stories with those characters uh, as far as that goes. And reboots in particular are often common in the comics just because comic book characters have such long publication histories. Uh, if nothing else, uh, the very fact that, you know, Batman isn't, you know, 140 years old, right. you know, has to, right, yes. has to, you know, come into the story somewhere. And so they have to sort of start over his history, you know, over again at some point. Yeah, we also talked about uh, the in the context of being a uh, running a game of Mutants and Masterminds, mm -hmm. there could mm -hmm. be plenty of reasons why you might want to do either one of those things. What are some of those? Yeah, definitely. Um, and Steve, I think you're 100% on the money with all of that. Um, because it is a huge part of superhero stories because yeah. superhero fans, science fiction fans, fantasy fans in general, we like details and we like mm. zooming in on little perceived things that were changed or the minutia and all that stuff, just as a generalization. I know I really like getting into the weeds sure. for setting stuff, um, but it's a great tool, um, especially in mm. a gaming sense, because a game is a group storytelling endeavor. Mm -hmm. So there are going to be times where the GM says something that changes the way you frame your character's backstory, or there are things that you say that the GM is like, oh, that's really cool. I need to figure out a way to make that retroactively true in the story. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, right. so I think I think we should start with retcons maybe and then look at reboots. That sounds, good. sounds good. And then um, just to, to put a bookmark in this thought, I think it's important. And we did kind of touch on it before the show as we were talking about the subject. But Oranon mentioned that um, uh, collaborative rewriting is the is is probably something that needs to be uh, mm -hmm. that, that they would like to kind of hear touched on. And I think that that's going to we're going to cover off on that for sure. Yeah. And yeah. I think that that's important because, like Alex says, you know, all, you know, RPG story creation is collaborative by its very nature. Right. Yes. Yes. Um, let's see. Um, yes. Yes. I uh, do love the repeated retcon jokes and uh, reboots. Um, mm -hmm. Let's see. There's also a reset where uh, reboots, except they start. Oh, there are also resets, yep. which are like yeah. reboots. They start at a point after the beginning. A yes. lot of times right now, a lot of reboots in comic book settings are resets. Are because resets. there are some things like. Barbara Gordon was through the killing joke in Batman's continuity seemingly every every time now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or Batman had four Robins by the time he's 33 now. <laughs> yep. Right. That's right. That's right. Yep. I actually brushed up with my first bit of this mortality last week because uh, I found out that the new actor for Superman is younger than me in real life. And that hurt my feelings. Oh, that Get, hurts. Get right. used to it, my friend. <laughs> yeah, it's all because uphill from here. <laughs> let me tell you, you either get to be the hero or live long enough to be the same age as the actress who's playing Aunt May. And that point, you turn into the villain. Yes. Um, I, uh, there's a Tempo asked a really great question that, that kind of falls into the category of, of definitions. And it's, can the time travel plot in Invincible be considered a retcon or a reboot where Invincible stopped the was stopped Omni-Man? I mm -hmm. think that sort of falls into a reframing rather than a retcon or a reboot, similar yeah. to the um, the time heist in Avengers Endgame, I think also falls into that category where it shows past events mm -hmm. and gives new context, but it's not necessarily yeah. changing what happened in those events. That said, some reboots, um, such as one of the Legion of Superheroes reboots, for example, um, mm -hmm. are essentially time travel stories. Um, hmm. that the reboot, the reason for the reboot in the context is that someone changes, literally changes history in the story. Um, and therefore the, you know, whole reboot happens. Um, in other cases in the comics, you know, reboots just happen and there's no story context for them. Mm -hmm. Got you. Yeah. You know, and so in the, in the context of a game, you could find yourself in a narrative crossroads or a, you know, suddenly the, 
superheroes are now accountants, you know, and it's tax season or something really, you know, something mm -hmm. more going on or yeah. he's a refresh yeah. or that kind and of stuff, which I, I like. Resets often come about because um, comic book properties especially have a tendency to sort of revert to a mean. Um, there's a sort of standard version of characters um, and it, when changes happen, eventually they tend to sort of revert um you know like uh the the notion of well like superman you know dying in dc comics you know the whole death of superman story was was long and played out for you know over a year but of course superman came back to life eventually because he's superman and the you know the you know and that's no a lot of money leave on the table right that's right there's that's no way right. dc is going to leave their number one character you know uh dead for forever uh, right, as far right. As that goes just enough to get everyone outraged, and then right. you know, just enough yeah. to get everybody interested in the story, and you know, exactly. Um, and then sooner or later, it goes back to you know the same thing with lots of changes in the comics. Yeah, and I do I think that that's an interesting uh, point in the difference between superhero media in general and superhero gaming. Mm -hmm. You're not beholden to that same no financial incentive to keep your primary characters alive. I mean, you should but, keep the PCs alive, obviously. Unless, you know, all of you agree that it's time to kill a character, in which case, go for it, go crazy. Mm -hmm. um, but you can have those sort of big status quo shakeups in your setting. But if you want to, after that event, if people aren't happy with it, you could do a retcon or you could reboot back to a certain point to uh, avoid things like that. I'm yeah. interested in both of your th thoughts on uh, on a point that Jay Gray's making. I, uh, here's what Jay says. I don't know where I heard it, but someone either on YouTube or TikTok made a good point that I've started to follow. I have the players write what is the most important aspects of the session at the end of the game. And then at the beginning of the next session, I have them all come up with an agreement on what, ha what happened and, mm -hmm. and what they know. And then I have them put the events on the timeline document. This means that I'm never actually the one making the retcon and it's the entire group you know, with his facilitation. So what do you think about that? I think that's a great tool. I yeah, do, um, indeed. really smart. I mean, I do something similar to that. It's a, except the players don't know that's what I'm doing. Uh, at the beginning of every session, I do ask uh, someone to do a recap. And then I take note of what they noticed were the important events in the story. And I mm -hmm. write those down in my notes is like, this is what they focused on. This is what they're interested in. Right. So yes. making an actual activity at the end of the session, I think, is a, that, that's a really interesting idea. Yeah, that is an interesting idea, and it's very collaborative. I like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, it really is. And plus, I love the record keeping. It's mm -hmm. just, I mean, for fun, really, mostly, just to be able to reflect on on the great time, but also because, you know, we we, we forget. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Let's see. Uh, SC Terra Marine says, Reboot could be, well, where you defeat an evil genie and all that evil he did with the mm -hmm. uh it comes undone yeah uh twisting yeah. of wishes and all that yeah. good stuff yeah yeah i tend to think of those as more reversions if you will mm -hmm. if we need a name for them um that there are often stories where heroes have a chance to basically hit the reset button that undoes whatever happened during that story they banish the evil genie they you know uh undo the time paradox you know, whatever it is, you know, and they, and basically the, all the, all the bad stuff of the story gets undone. Yeah. Um, and that's a, that's a common comic book trope um, because it, it gets rid of a lot of potentially messy uh, continuity problems, you know, where, you know, the bad guy has like, you know, blown up the moon or, you know, sure. yeah. you know yeah, exactly. what have you. <laughs> Yeah, uh, it real quick, you also get, like you get the opportunity to explore that terrible thing that happened, but right. you don't have to live with the consequences live with the consequences of, of that terrible thing forever. Yeah, yeah, yeah and absolutely. That's, and that's the cool thing with these sorts of concepts is as a game, you have these. This gives you flexibility to explore different kinds of stories and different themes without having to worry about torpedoing the whole campaign. Right now, RC says someday I'll get players to take notes, and I'm I'm reminded of a certain Kickstarter that is just got so many like there's journals and all kinds of good right. stuff. Um, that's ours, you know. It's the yeah, uh, yeah over there they, at the. If they have uh, fancy Valley. player journals, maybe they'll want to take notes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I am a big proponent of taking notes, but I do know that not every person works that way. It's true. I think there there are some I think there are some people who take written notes and then they're distracted because they're writing notes and they don't really absorb what they wrote down. Yeah. Fair enough. Yeah. 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 There's some people 
where note taking during the game breaks their immersion and you know they want to focus on the game and not taking notes yeah i like to luckily, take note of who in the chat there's is... one player who's like a secretary for the group like they're willing mm -hmm. to take notes for everything yeah sure yeah, yeah. absolutely i was I, gonna say i i i generally take note of who in the chat is causing problems that's yeah. what i do mm -hmm. yeah i'm mm -hmm. curious what what the impact if any has been on folks who are doing more streaming and online games with the ability to just record your game sessions yeah um, and nobody has to take notes because all you have to do is let's go back to the instant replay and see what sure get a, get a transcript easily out of that be able yeah. to save yeah. my butt last week <laughs> nice nice because we did the second half of my thanksgiving one shot last week Mm -hmm. RC mentions that uh, that he does the recap at the beginning of the session, which I think has helpful because sometimes you it takes a minute before you get back together. Mm -hmm. That mm -hmm. refresh is great. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. And I noticed earlier on folks were talking about the fact that that especially in superhero media, that there is an increasing sort of meta awareness of, you know, retcons and and all of those elements of of the story um so that now you get you know things like and i think very mild spoiler for uh the, the new spider-verse movie um things like you know um canon events you know where mm. you know comic book continuity is actually part of universal law and you know if you mess with the continuity too much you may unravel the you know whole state of the okay. universe yeah uh, and things like that. That's that's very a very meta aware, you know, approach yeah. to you know uh, the notion of retconning things. Oh, Sean does bring up an interesting facet of retconning, and you know that is that you you could be the one that remembers. Oh yes, the infamous. Mm -hmm. You're the only one who remembers how it was. Yeah, it yes. happens to Barry Allen all the time. Right. Um, some good soup says, what about rewrites of a story? Like the characters go through some, uh, the same events of the story, but it's written to fix things in the plot for better or worse. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's definitely something you can do. I think, um, I think it's something you want to make sure you talk to your players before you spring it on them. Yeah. And so you all yeah. agree what is a better version of the story. Yeah. Um, and, oh, that is the beautiful thing about this. And Claude mentions this another retcon. It's just rendering a session that left a bad taste in everyone's mouth. Mm -hmm. Non-canon. Yeah. Un Schedule. Yeah, Absolutely. There, that is a great tool for game masters. And I hate to invoke this, but especially if you have had a problem player who left the game, mm -hmm. but you don't want to start everything over with new characters. You just want to come up with some way to keep yep. this story going without having to acknowledge that that person was there making bad decisions. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 And yeah. Oranon mentions the fluidity of canon uh, that a what if episode could be a fun way to kind of do it in a different way. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, what ifs are a lot of fun, especially with, you know, with the big decisions that happen in your games. You have the choice. Well, because your players want to know what would have happened if we did this. Mm -hmm. If they keep asking you about a specific event, run it as a what if session. Yeah, do it that way and see how it plays out. I like that a lot. It's not it's not an option all the time. Like uh, there's a lot of convention games I run where at the end. People are like, what would have happened if I did this? And I have to be like, I don't know. I was making up the stores moving along. <laughs> right. Yeah. Fun. <laughs> and then that's some of the most fun that I've ever had is when, yeah. you know, that's that's so kind of extemporaneous. Well, sometimes, yeah. Sometimes when the story goes off the rails and you're just improvising all of it, some really interesting stuff can happen. Yeah. Yeah. Because I think you're also a little more dependent on what the players are doing. Like, you know, you're, you really, you're not leading them along so much as that you're, exchanging ideas back and forth and at mm -hmm. times they're leading you along yeah, yeah. Um, another gaming thing that is good for retcons is you play your first session with everybody and some people find out that their character doesn't work 100 percent the way that they thought it would mm, yes. let them let them move their points around and then just stand was always that way to, yeah, yeah when they go to the next session oh yeah sure sure yeah we, we yeah, did talk actually, go ahead i was gonna say it is often a really good idea to keep things fairly fluid in the early adventures of a campaign uh, so that if players, you know, have that realization of, wow, this like character design does not work the way I thought, or I don't, you know, I spent points on this thing that is just obviously not going to come in play because it's not really been a thing um, or those kinds of things to let them make these quiet little adjustments behind the yeah. scenes um, mm -hmm. because they don't affect, they don't affect anything and it makes the players game experience more fun. Um, it's the same as uh, one kind of retcon that's unique to, RPGs is the is the game master is changing the story behind the scenes all the time. 
in real um, time. Right, in real time. And the players don't necessarily see any of those retcons um, because they uh, the the only story they know is the one that that actually is presented to them at the table. So mm -hmm. um, you know, there's a lot of behind the scenes retconning happening and game mastering. All the yeah, time. that's so. so and yeah, and I really think, like Steve was saying, the beginning of the campaign I think is when the foundation is settling. Like you've poured it, but yeah. you're not sure what it's going to look like yet. Yeah, it's still soft, and you know, still needs to sort of gel. Yeah, and you'll see what your players are interested in. They'll chase down the things that they want. Like mm -hmm. they'll. And once they get into the rhythm, once you both, once you've all established your rapport and your chemistry together, then you can really settle into continuity and things like makes, that. Makes yeah, yeah, yeah. Make some of those lasting sort of commitments. Uh, Hanover says, sort of related. We do a free march style at uh, FV, so adventure modules get ran over and over and over. Mm -hmm. Thoughts on the That's, best way um, to FV is Freedomverse. It's a Discord where lots of yeah. people hang out to play mutants and masterminds. Yep, it is indeed. Um, I have lots of ideas about this topic. I yeah. actually wrote about this topic in Astonishing Adventures Assembled. And, so well, real quick, for here. those of you uh, listening at home or watching later um, without the chat, thoughts on the best ways to reboot retcon the same story over and over while keeping it mm -hmm. fresh? Yeah, um, the I, I find, especially if you're running the same adventure a lot, trying to figure out a new villain to make the central villain of the story is a great way to come up with a new spin mm -hmm. on an idea of a similar caper. Um even sort of doing a little bit of surgery on the module and pulling some scenes out and swapping scenes around from module mm, to module could be a lot sure. of fun. Yep. Um, and it, it depends very heavily on if you're running the adventure over and over again for different groups of players, mm -hmm. then that sort of thing in my experience is less necessary because I've, you know, had years of running the same adventure from multiple groups of players at conventions where literally no two games look anything like each other yeah uh, and the players have totally and even if the players are playing the same characters much less different characters which also is a total different spin mm -hmm. on the adventure um the players have totally different approaches to things one or two early decisions will totally drive things in a completely different direction um it's it's honestly fascinating to watch um adventures unfold in completely different ways as you mm -hmm. run them multiple times yeah i uh, i tend to run the same adventures all year for con season like i come up with what adventures mm -hmm. i want to run at the beginning of the year and then i probably run each of them six or ten times depending on how many cons i go to mm -hmm. um and yeah i think it's less of a problem than you're worried about because generally you won't have a lot of players showing up for the same adventure twice. But even if you do, they're showing up because they really like that story and they're right. excited to see what else they can bring to it. Do with it. Yeah. Sure. So sure. Really, any changes you want to make are for your own entertainment. So because the players who show up who haven't played it before won't know that it's different than the normal way. Right. It's their right. first time through the adventure. So and nothing's true until a player sees it. <laughs> right. And even then, Absolutely. sometimes not. Right. Right. Yeah. So this is interesting. So this is some fairly high level next level surgery that gets done when we're mm -hmm. doing the retcon or we're doing the reboot. And and because it is a, a, a partner sport, you know, you've got a mm -hmm. table full of people who want to feel invested and involved. Um, one of the things that's interesting, John uh, Pelogic says, uh, I do suggest a, a pitfall I have succumbed to in earlier days. Excess retconning of NPCs, the hero supporting cast, which ends up meaning that nobody has an ordinary personal history. Uh, what are some things that you mm -hmm. can think of just from your personal professional experience where people should say, hey, keep you keep or, or should think keep an eye out for this as the GM or, or avoid this this kind of pitfall or or even something that you adjusted in your in your own skill set as it relates to this kind of uh, work? Well, I'll say one thing where it comes to, especially like supporting cast and things like that, is my experience as a GM has always been, don't get too involved in building out those characters right from the start. Mm -hmm. Because like we were talking about how in the early days of a, a campaign, things are very fluid and still haven't really settled yet. Um, if you have designed like this, you know, multi-page history for this NPC, I guarantee you that right from the start of the campaign, the players don't care. Um, they're yeah. not going to want to hear this character's long backstory. Um, and you don't know if that character is really going to catch on 
Um, sometimes the NPCs that you intend for a, an adventure are the ones the players ignore. And yes. the bit character that you make up like on the fly because you need to know who this hot dog vendor is uh, on the street corner is the character that the players become absolutely obsessed with. Um, and they're, they're the ones like, I want to know that character's story. You know, what's their deal? It helps to do it Bruce Campbell. Right. You know, um, and so be have a very light touch with the NPCs to start with. I think really mm -hmm. all you need to do is sort of sketch them and get a really just rough sense of what they are. If they're supporting characters for some of the player characters, by all means, let the players fill out their flesh out their background some. Um, but I don't think you need to go into a ton of detail until you start getting to the point where people are interested in delving into those characters. Yeah. yeah, I think in the early days of your campaign, you really want to keep in mind that lean more in experiences than explanations. Mm, yes. Like ah, you want these smart. NPCs to be, why, why do I care about this person? Why, what's right. interesting about them? What draws me to them? Not... Where do they go to college? What do they do? What what's their haircut? All that stuff. Don't worry about all that stuff. Worry yeah. about the feeling you're trying to invoke with that. All both the characters and the scenes and the plots that you're introducing. Nice, nice. It's um, a, sort of a learning curve. It's I explain this concept to writers a lot. It's if you make the learning curve too steep, your world building turns into brick wall world building syndrome, and people just bounce off of it. Mm -hmm. But you want to sort right. of drip feed things until they're interested, and then they'll tend to ask you what they want to know. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, Simon brings up, I think, a really good point, and that is you know, identifying places where you can uh, diversify and swap hot swap stuff in and out that won't mm -hmm. be too disruptive. And and specifically, Simon says, uh, Simon says, speaking of of reboots, I made my first UK adventure a raid on a gang headquarters upmarket drug den that has uh, the choice of three different gangs who could be running it. Yeah. So if you had a lot, you just swap in a new one. And yeah, yeah. that's a, sure. kind of a way to do it. Yeah. Yeah, like that's that. a great way to do a con game too, because then you have a built in way to make it different for yourself from game to game to game. Grognard Piper says, I'm here. Am I late? No, right on time, friend. The Grognard is never late. Yes. So no, explain right, to you why. what he means to. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, let's see. Ramna Pat says, often those NPCs might not even need a stat block, just notes on what they're yeah. good at. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Generally, you don't want to make the NPCs roll anything. Just give them a bonus. Just give the player who's rolling a bonus related to that NPC. Yeah. Um, this is actually a good point, too, I think, when talking about balance. Um, Oranon says, on the other end of that scale, revolving doors of NPCs, frequent PC death, it's like uh, frequent reboots, retcons, and that work become transient after a while, and it's hard to get invested. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's very that's true. true. That is mm -hmm. true. You you need some stability in your, your campaign for the players to to begin to latch on to things and, and, like you said, feel invested in it. Mm -hmm. Uh, Gray Matters Game Mastering, I agree with you. Um, building games with modularity and expandability in mind. That's why I love Mutants and Masterminds, mm -hmm. why I love the Adventure Game Engine, because you know these are these are bits and pieces of tools and things that you can use to kind of mm -hmm. uh, keep things fresh. Um, yeah. Let's see. Jonesy says, uh, common issues that I see with retconning is making everything and everyone interconnect. Yes, I, mm -hmm. I dislike this greatly, especially with when your setting gets much bigger. Like... I don't know, a galaxy where it's one family's drama that's everybody's problem. Right, right. Kevin Bacon doesn't need to be everybody's friend. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Or they're or or they're dead. Or their dad, or yes, exactly. Uh, any word on when we'll see an official foundry mod? It's coming soon, Craft Zero One. Yes. Um I, I wouldn't even say coming soon. When we got the the uh the the team is small but mighty and working hard mm -hmm. on all of those aspects. It is in the future, it is yes. not when prognostic. Decatable. When when there is word, we will be trumpeting it from the rooftops. Trust me, we will not keep it yeah. a secret. We'll probably oh, I have promise a special you. Special M Monday for it. We will that, uh, absolutely. And Craft Zero One, I'll come to your home <laughs> and play with you. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, yeah. I do. I do think that you can have some interest when you interconnect things, but just understand that it makes your universe smaller. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if that's what you want do that but if you're sure. looking to evoke this larger scale story not everything needs to be related to everything yeah yeah gotcha that okay. was actually one of my biggest complaints about the daniel craig james bond arc mm -hmm. which it turned out that specter was the problem for everybody or blofeld yep. was the reason for all yep. of his problems in all the movies well and that sort of touches on another reason for, 
<clears throat> excuse me, another reason for reboots um, that is especially common in the comics is when settings or stories just become too big. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, the the key reason me, the key reason that DC did Crisis on Infinite Earths, which was the most infamous and famous you know reboot of all time. Um, was because they felt that the continuity of their comics universe had simply become too big and involved and just tangled for new readers to jump into it. Absolutely, yeah. And David, I, I agree with you. Um, you know, it, it, uh, David mentions that uh, every story does not need to invoke the sauce gods, and I'm like, I know, like it doesn't. Every event isn't some cosmic gravening, you know. Um, a question that I have for you two is um, when we talk a lot about support of the GM, we we do sort of share, you know, uh, what, you know, players should do, like, you know, kind of protect their, their good time and to enjoy themselves. But when it comes to the retconning and it comes to this sort of shift, what should the players be ready to do to, like, you know, to 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 help along the storyline and, and to be a good a good contributor. I think it depends on the nature of the retcon, but some general advice for players who want to help when this happens is be open to the change. Under you know, get to the bottom of why the change is happening or why it needs to be retroactively explained. Um and be open to open to presenting your ideas for why it needs to happen, what's going on and being willing to continue with that story. Once you figure out the change. That I think is really crude. It's really just about communicating. If you are really passionate about the one thing, come to terms with that as a group, Mm -hmm. you know, and have that discussion. Yeah. There Uh, is one other thing that retcons are really good for that. I want to touch on. Um, It's great for safety tools. Um, Yes. Mm. uh, The green, yellow, red light system. I'm a big fan of that. If a red light comes up, that's a moment the GM needs to wreck on something. So go back to the beginning of a scene and rework where it was coming from or, you know, change the content of that scene and mm-hmm. to make it safe for everybody who's playing. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. you know, Jacob brings up something that I think we can all sort of share a little heartbreak and, and anger. And uh, and that is uh, Jacob says, what I dislike is when reboots happen and they result in killing a favorite character. No reason to kill them just to. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Just to have them leave and do something off screen. Yeah. Um, yeah that is a tough one. Yeah, to come to terms that's, with. Well, yeah. And sometimes that's often just done honestly for cheap drama. Yeah. You know, yeah, I mean, yeah. because especially when you're you're writing out a character anyway, you know, to give Why them to get a some big, juice. Yeah. Give them yeah. A, right, give them a big dramatic death that's gonna, you know, evoke an emotional response rather than having them just sort of fade from existence, you know, yeah. is is a, a common thing that writers want to do. Mm-hmm. Well, here's an interesting thought. Uh, That's a rap studio says, what if I was rebooting from something like the dark Knight trilogy uh, to something more akin to the 1966 Batman show? Like that's interesting. Well, that's another example of a reason why you do reboots is mm-hmm. because times change um, and characters and settings and the like have to change with them. Um, a lot of, you know, a lot of stories from, you know, even, you know, much even a decade ago, much less 60, 70 years ago, you know, uh, have elements to them that are just either not appropriate or just don't work well in our modern context. And you, you need to, you know, adapt them uh, Mm -hmm. so far as that goes. Uh, real quick, I want to say hi to folks. Um, we are, we're experiencing a high listener volume and we appreciate it. Um, Good to see you. Uh, good to, uh, and if you have questions about retconning or rebooting or really pretty much anything, we're here for you. Um, drop that in the chat and we'll be happy to address it in some way or lie trying to do it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but that's a wrap. I think um, if you want to specifically try to reboot something like the Dark Trilogy into the 66 Batman show, it's you know, you take out all of the you take out all of the set dressing for the story. You boil mm-hmm. it down to the story elements and you figure out how to take those story beats and put the set dressing of the zaniness on top of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, you know, you take 
Batman goes to training. Batman comes back and starts his life as Batman. Batman stops Rachel Ghoul at the end on a train. I mean, it already, when you yeah. boil it down to just that, Batman fighting Rachel Ghoul on a train can 100% be a 66 Batman could, story. Yeah, I was going to say, could easily be a sure. 60s Batman yeah. story. Um, and yeah, it's finding ways to make, to put spins on the characters that are involved in it. Like a 66 Scarecrow is going to be very different than the Killian Murphy Scarecrow that was in the Dark Knight trilogy. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, Cesar Romero is going to be much different than Heath Ledger's Joker. <laughs> yes. Hey, Rebel uh, Moose, I'm glad you stopped by. Um, we'll, we'll start explaining the entire show to you from the beginning, starting now. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> That's the retcon. Start the whole That's show the over again. That's yeah, right. I, and you you interrogate why you're trying to make that change. Um, because right. it is, it's, the plot points can be very much the same, but it's the tone, it's the audience, it's the, yeah, it's all of that stuff, you know, mm-hmm. Batman's not going to show up in the interrogation room and slam Joker's head on the table in right. the beginning of that interrogation. He's <laughs> right. going to get a call on the red phone. He and Robin are going to slide down the bat pole and then drive over to the city hall to have that conversation with Joker, who's probably right. going to be chilling with just walking you know, around with some <clears throat> ne'er do wells following him. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. You know. Yeah. Funny. There's not going to be a guy with a cell phone bomb in his stomach that blows up the whole police department. Like, no. Right. It yeah, probably yeah. would be a confetti bomb or some right. silly thing that made everybody right. dance. <laughs> some bright colored gas yeah. that makes everyone dance. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, Everybody's doing the Batusi down at the uh, Dead GCPD. <laughs> hey, that's a good one. I like that move. Mm-hmm. Um, whoa, it's 2.51 Pacific Standard Time, which means mm-hmm. we're running out of time. Um, yeah. What do you think are some of the, just to kind of summarize, what are some of the 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 things to think about when entering into a retcon or a reboot. Alex, I think uh, the most important thing, anytime you enter into a retcon or a reboot is to figure out why it needs to happen and make a decision and stick with it. You don't want it to be too malleable, but you Mm want to make sure that you're using this tool for a specific reason, not just as a flight of fancy. Yeah. Um, I, ooh, smart. I think you want to take into account the scale of what you're mm-hmm. doing with retcons and reboots. Um, there are there are really like we've we've talked about here. There are really really small ones um, mm-hmm. that are just you know like almost invisible behind the scenes adjustments to characters and their stats or their mm-hmm. backgrounds or the like or tiny little adjustments to the structure of an adventure to change a scene that everybody agrees didn't work, you know, or things like that. And yeah. then there's, hey, I'm going to start this entire setting over again mm-hmm. um, and change a whole bunch of things um, as far as that goes. That's that's effectively launching a new campaign, you right. know, whether you're, yeah. you're using elements of an older campaign or not. Um, you're basically starting over again with the game. Um, and so, you know, have a sense of proportion uh, when you're using retcons uh, and reboots in your games. Small ones, generally pretty fine, you know, and, and something you can do more often. But you're not going to want to restart your campaign every, you know, mm-hmm. four adventures. And neither will your players. They won't. Right. And right neither of the players is going to want to do that, you know. Yeah. And I, I do think that that is the I think that's an important thing to keep in mind from a game perspective is if you want to do a reboot, make sure there is a like a logistical reason that it has to happen. Maybe a player has moved on. Mm-hmm. Maybe there's a new addition of the game and you want to stay in the same campaign world, but you want to re-explore a couple of things as sure. you start over again or sure. yeah, or you're running the same adventure with a different group of people, just things like that. Absolutely. Um, so this is interesting, and I don't know if we have enough time to really answer this question. I think to, in the in the way that would be satisfying for our friend. That's uh, that's a rap mm-hmm. studios. But mm-hmm. um, uh, how would you handle retconning something into forties, fifties, sixties? Like uh, if you're changing something from the present day into the past day, sort of doing like the Justice League New Frontier storyline, where they mm-hmm. moved everybody back to the sixties. Yeah. Um, I think you look at the big cultural events uh, to start with and start figuring out where superpowered origins can work into that sort of setting. 
Um, you look at deciding if you want your story to be sort of historically realistic versus a uh, high concept like 50s Americana rather than mm -hmm. that. Um, and you you talk to your players about how just how much um, realism you're going to be dealing with yeah. in regards to history. Yeah, I it's a big session zero game. It really is, and I think there are two two key considerations. It, one is the real history of the context, mm -hmm. and the other is the the genre history of what was what were superheroes like at that time. You mm -hmm. know, are you going for a golden age feel of the 1940s, but seen through a modern sensibility, or are you also trying to capture elements of what the actual history of the 1940s was like and right. to a certain degree how are you and your players going to handle certain elements of that right right yeah. problematic and, and the whole thing right. right right and if you have established characters who are tied to historical events you look at what anagolis historical events that you could tie mm -hmm. them into yeah. like iron man started off getting blown up in vietnam but now he's in iraq and i'm sure he'll be somewhere sure. else in yeah. five years right. you're right <laughs> some yes, other right. foreign war yeah yeah but um, you also want to check is is the historical event key to this character's per mm -hmm. perspective like magneto should generally be a holocaust survivor even though that makes bringing him into 2023 2030 2040 even harder but yeah increasingly right. difficult yeah right and yet not impossible because no, look because it's superheroes comics. that's right. right yeah that's right um this is they just de-aged him recently i think they hit him with the de-aging ray because oh yeah. did they x-men or x-mening <laughs> yep x-men or x-mening um i like this too i think it's important to remember that all of the things we discuss, like there are just certain things you just got to do just because you care mm -hmm. about people and you want to do it mm -hmm. the right way. But, you know, Grognard mentions the reason I reboot and retcon my universe for every new campaign is that I run is to bring it back, to bring back dead villains and also mm -hmm. maybe improve the universe story. Mm -hmm. And that's, sure. that's part of that process, you know, sure. to, to stop it in mid game and say, I ah, we're doing it again, mm -hmm. uh, is, is, uh, pretty disruptive unless it's important and mm -hmm. you, you've got it down. I mean, I think yeah. that's exactly right. And that's, yeah. that's exactly the Sorry, go ahead, Ox. I say this a lot, but the point of Mutants and Masterminds is to play a game and have fun with your friends. Mm -hmm. You know, if a retcon or reboot is going to facilitate that, do it. Do if it. it's not, don't do it. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Yeah, I yeah. love that. Grognard's point is basically the exact same reason why comic book companies do retcons. It's to recycle resources mm -hmm. that they might not be able to use otherwise and they like you know we will modernize these characters and we'll bring back a bunch of bunches of characters who are dead and you know, yeah all of that uh, sort of stuff. people really like these villains and i wish batman would stop murdering them <laughs> right right yeah exactly yeah justice yeah. for the bouncer who got kicked into a sewer in the 80s and never came back and never oh, came back never came back um until hey. my misfits game he's back in the misfits <laughs> nice <laughs> nice uh so a quick question um um for you both uh, just your opinion or however you want, or maybe you know this mathematically, but DC or Marvel, who does the most egregious retconning and all of that stuff? Is it used to, used to be DC, but Marvel's catching up. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think that they are increasingly rebooting more and more frequently. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Both of them. I think both DC is more famous for them. I think yeah. Marvel's are less well received on a regular basis. He said, mm -hmm. remembering that time Spider-Man sold his marriage to the devil. Yeah, yeah. DC had the had the <laughs> head start of the fact that their comics continuity was about twenty years older than mm -hmm. Marvel's. Um, so they they hit the point of uh, the the so called crisis point of having to redo their continuity earlier. Um, I see. But yeah. now both both of them have been around for you know uh, generations, and so it's it's a common thing for for both of them having to deal with it. Yeah. So, which well, I get. I mean, it's it's intimidating to tell somebody, all right, pick up Batman 757 and start reading. <laughs> like, right, right, right. From right. a new, from an onboarding perspective. But mm -hmm. yeah, eventually it, it becomes a situation where it's hard to care about the continuity. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah. Also, some good soup. Penny Plunderer 2 is one of the misfits in my misfits game as well. It's his nice. daughter who wants everybody to know that that penny belongs to her dad, not Two-Face. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. I like that a lot. Um, okay, so 
Here's the deal. We're out of time. Um, I want to uh, thank everyone in chat for hanging out and 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 uh, chatting with us. And always, these conversations are rewarding, and we all kind of come away with it with a deeper understanding of what we should, what we could, and what we ought to do when it comes mm -hmm. to this kind of stuff. Um, I want to turn now to uh, Steve. Do you have any? What's going on in the uh, Kenson Cinematic Universe? <laughs> uh, let's see. In the in my personal multiverse. Um, I uh, just uh, released um, the third annual for Icons over on Drive Through RPG and my nice uh, website, stevekenson.com. Um, I am um, Alex and I just uh, finished up a bunch of sample Valiant characters that folks will probably be getting a, a look at fairly soon. Um, and, um, they look terrific because Hal laid them all out. And let me tell you, it's, it's always a great element of the development process. When you take this wall of words, um, that you've been staring at on your word processor, and then the, uh, art department does their magic and turns it's it impressive. into really nice looking pages. <laughs> Yeah, it, it is. Uh, and, and Hal and team are just really, really good at that. Very, yeah. very good at it. Uh, yeah, good stuff. Dropped a link to that. Uh, anything else you want to share? Um, uh, uh, I think that's pretty much it right now. Okay. I know we got a lot of things cooking moving forward here, and we got a lot of things that we'll be talking about. Um, of course, we'll also provide you more information about the, what do they call it? The yep. um, Valiant Preview. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, Sean, just to answer your question, they were neck and neck right until you asked that question. And oh, three put, more now months. Put, now you've put it behind, just like the, the groundhog, you know, seeing his shadow. Sean, Sean, Sean. I thought you... you are so close. Yeah. So close. All right. Well, there you go, Any, folks. Anybody who wants an update about the Vigilantes Handbook should come tune in on the 14th when we have our developer Q&A. That yeah. Be That's my yes. recommendation to people who yes. want to know more about that you, book. Sean literally retconned what Alex was going to say. <laughs> That's right. Sean, you fool. Um, <laughs> Alex. Uh, I have a lot what... of good news on that front, but mm. tune in if you want to know about the good news. Yeah. yeah. Well, so speaking of good news, what are some things? What do you got cooking, Alex? You have like 20 uh, actual plays you're running concurrently. Um, what do you got? Uh, I'm actually not. Am I running a game this week? I don't think I'm running a game this week. <laughs> I don't. Yeah. You're always running a game, though. I know. Yes. I'm, I'm not running a game this week. Uh, Tomorrow night, I will be playing in our Something in the Dark arcade stream for our Earth Prime games over on Untold Stories Project. Um, I've been working on a lot of the Valiant stuff, been working on some crowdfunding stuff. I've got, uh, speaking of retcons, Chrono Crisis is finishing up development soon. Um, yeah, that's. I think those are the main things I've got going on. Nice, nice. Yeah. Um, well, I have something to share about the, uh, the, what would you call it? The gravy cinematic universe. No, I'm kidding. It's not about gravy. Um, it, it, so here's the deal. We will mm. be doing a dev chat. I haven't checked with these gentlemen, what the perfect mm -hmm. day will be. It might be Wednesday. It might be another day. Who knows, but it's happening soon. And I just want to share just a glimpse, just a little peek at something that is, uh, currently in development and we're trying, I'm trying to get it out the door as soon as possible. It is just one of those things. Oh no, that, that's, I'm sorry. I'm looking at all the stuff and I'm like, that's Alex wearing a wig. Uh, here we go. One second, please hold. And I may have got the date wrong. I think it's actually the 21st. It's the mm, chat, not the 14th. I think so. Okay. All right. Uh, are you talking about the, for, for Patreon? Yeah, or the third yeah. Wednesday. The third Wednesday is the 21st, not the 14th. It is. My That's bad. Right. No worries, no worries. Um, but I will be back tomorrow for the Joy of Game Mastery ooh. at uh, 5 p.m. The last time I did it, it was at it was in Pacific time. Uh, yeah, 5 p.m. EST. Um, yes, yeah. And uh, it, this this is all I will say about that. Um, it is uh, it is a work in progress, and folks will see more of that information coming very, very soon. Very and so soon. We'll, yeah, yeah. Um, okay, everybody, thank you so much for hanging. I'm glad you like it, folks. Uh, absolutely. And um, yeah, we'll we'll see or or we may do a different day. So keep your eyes peeled. It's going to be real important that uh, folks who are currently engaged with the Patreon stay engaged because there's 
a bounty mm -hmm. of benefits coming your way that um, will see you just Very up similar. to your eyeballs and good stuff. Yeah. Yes. Um, gentlemen, thank you so much for hanging out again on this Monday. Uh, always a blast. It goes by so fast and I always enjoy it. Mm -hmm. um, and with that, I say to everybody, a good Mumamo unto you. We'll see you uh, Thursday for Thursday. Mm -hmm. Bye. See you, Bye. everybody. <laughs>